Sweet Baby Inc. CEO Kim Belair reflects on company backlash, says anti-DEI critics are coming together under the rallying cry of far-right supremacy. So uh, what, are, what are your thoughts on this, uh, like, Gray? Like, uh, like the, 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 this was a couple of days ago, right? Where she, she said that like she likes woke stuff or something like that. I, I, like she likes people that are making fun of it is because like now she can like isolate all of them in like one bubble. Like, what do you think about this? Uh, I, I have not read this one, but I do know that they kind of overhauled. They, they, they purged their website. I haven't seen it, but it's like it's pretty much bare bones now, if I'm not mistaken. If we look at their website right now, yeah, let me look it up. Yeah, uh, they they cleared out all the um all their current clients, and I think some of the things they've said, but the the internet is kind of forever, so I don't think they're doing themselves any favors. Yeah, but in a sense, it's it's kind of worse too, because like right. Now, instead of showing who they work with, we don't know anymore. So it's kind of more of like we don't more of a bad. I see it more of a bad thing because like I prefer them shouting who they work with rather than rather than them hiding it and then us finding out like the for future games. Oh, they were involved in it. I we I'd rather that we know ahead of time rather than being taken by surprise. They insert DEI stuff in our video games. Yeah, they don't That's have the like the the client list on the bottom anymore. Yeah, and yeah, like it looks like everything has changed. Um, savvy, I saw that you po you uh you repost this um on X your X account. What are your thoughts on this? Obviously, transparency is a sign of an honest business individual. And when people make moves to be less transparent, you know that there is something going on behind the scenes that is a massive red flag. They can try to hide these things, but people already know what they're about. She's been overly confident at speaking events and she was you know once is a joke twice is a pattern three times that's part of your marketing pitch so every time that she says things like go bully your marketing team go scare the ever-living crap out of them that has stayed with people and people will not forget that by hiding things that they have on their website it shows that they know they're not doing something useful yeah 100 percent yeah, if, if what they did was a good thing, if they had a positive impact on games, they wouldn't be in hiding, they wouldn't be saying the things that they are, and they would be proudly showing off all of these big names that hire them. But they know they're useless and their time is coming to an end. Yeah, see, the first paragraph, paragraph says that in the opinion of the company CEO, Kim Belair, not only has the ongoing discourse surrounding the work of Sweet Baby Inc. amounted to nothing more than a campaign of harassment, but its critics' op opposition to the concept of corporate style diversity, equity, and inclusion is an indicator of the far right ideas. Uh, now, it's just like so. This is the I, I'm not going to go and watch this. Um, you guys, if you if you guys want, I can share this one in the chat. But it's uh, she basically goes on. It's a hello. My name is Kim Belair. In my circles, I'm largely considered think uh, a relatively nice person. These are my dogs, Sage and and uh, Flaky. These are my cats. Yada yada yada. And then it's like, but the day. I am crazed CEO, Sweet Baby Inc. and DEI obsessed censorship mafia who is currently ruining and wokeifying all the video games that you've uh, ever played. Which is <laughs> when she said that, it's like like she's embracing it. And like I know she's this is you know supposed to come off as a joke, but I, I know that she's embracing it. And the thing is that they're not going to back down from what they're doing. Like, even though that you have like this, you know, DEI detected. And like all the stuff that Caprutus has been doing, everyone has been running uh, stories and saying how bad it is. And now, like this whole entire thing is being like covered, hidden. Our client list is gone. Yeah, it just it's just it's a really bad tell on what do you think about your company, right? You're, are you because usually if you are, you know, especially a lot of these people who are in this industry, um, they really they're really proud of what they worked on. Usually, like I I work in the game industry. And uh, whenever a person who's really, oh, oh, I worked on this one, all all this like DEI stuff that's in Spider-Man 2 in all, you know, Final Fantasy or, you know, or Spoken or whatever, Suicide Squad, because it's just like, it's all us. And, you know, the fact that they're only catering to like a small percent goes to show that they love losing money. <laughs> but uh, I, I, I don't know. Do, do you agree with that? Like, uh, it's just, is, is there more to this other than the fact that she just like, this delusional, like crazy sycophant. 
It's so this this is what happens when gender studies individuals are released into the world. There are no jobs for them. So they need to come up with problems so that way they have a job. They are professional Karens. Uh, so my degree program <laughs> was in biology. Even back in college, just before any of this conversation ever happened, every single person in the regular psychology program, all of the biologists, everyone else in the science departments, we laughed at gender studies people. We mocked them. We said, have fun wasting $80,000 on that piece of paper that you'll never be able to use in life. These are the people yeah. who want you to, to pay off their debt for them. They don't provide anything of value. And they know that. The, uh, so the Take This Org is my favorite thing to, to bring up with this. So the individual who, who managed to get the, the DHS $669,000 contract from DHS to monitor gamers and prove that there's alt-right extremism and terrorist recruitment happening on a daily basis in Call of Duty lobbies. Well, guess what? The contract didn't get to renew at the end of the two-year period, and the topic was so important to her, so near and dear to her heart, so visceral to her career that she's now writing about Taylor Swift's sycophants. <laughs> and and what, what yeah. makes me uh, upset is that a lot of these uh, um, community managers, like even like the ones that work for the company, uh, the company that I work for, like all of them, have, I feel like all of them are the same. They're all like, oh, you know, talk to your your marketing team and like harass them if they don't do this kind of stuff. And all of them have like, like you know, crazy, you know, flags in their profiles and like all like either not one or or all of them. And you get the trans flag and the Ukraine flag, and the, <laughs> for some reason the Palestine flag there too. And then you get the the pronouns in the bios. Like all it's of them are the same people. I feel like. It's so yeah. weird. So that's because the community management position is the lowest of the low. It is essentially just customer service rebranded. So it's supposed to be something like an entry level position, but it's supposed to be akin to providing customer service. You are the voice of the company to give updates and keep the community informed, but you are also relaying messages, uh, comments, technical problems, things like that from the community. You are nothing more than that. Sometimes you put on events and organizations, sometimes you get to get a budget for giveaways or things like that, right? But at the end of the day, you're still providing customer service. I used to do community management and actually I train people to be moderators and offer good community management uh, for, for, for all of that. But these people, they, they, they are power hungry because they have no power in their lives. They sit there on their computer all day long doing nothing of value. They don't create anything. They're not writing something. They're not making their own stories. They're not trying to develop any skills. They're not working on an education. They are literally just sitting there all day in the dark alone. And then somebody somewhere along the way said, hey, we'll, we'll pay you to be a Discord community manager and we'll pay you $30,000 or $40,000. It's not a lot of money, but to somebody who's living off of government assistance, that's quite a bit. That's a nice little bump up in the in, in the in the payment uh, pipeline there for them. And now yeah. we're where we're at because they let these low level individuals who have no customers training service just run free. Yeah, and, and we do yeah. know that a lot. Um, they've been getting uh, you know, a barrage of people who are complaining about, hey, you should stop, you know, mm -hmm. putting all a bunch of these like propaganda ideology messaging in your video game. Right, right over here, this is paragraph. At its peak, which was somewhere around fe uh, February or March of this year, we were getting something like 300 emails a day, which admittedly some of those are going to be spam or bots or whatever, but they were often accompanied by death threats and threats to our families. Now, of course, I don't, I don't, I, I, yeah. I, this is some, yeah, I don't condone, condone that. This is something I don't yeah. yeah, this is awful. But the thing is that if you actually have like legitimate criti criticism or why you shouldn't have it, like, it's not considered, uh, you know, hate speech or whatever. I, I think the thing is that if DEI and like ESG stuff actually does make money, Toyota wouldn't have reverted their their statement with that with the thing last time we talked about uh, about them removing or furthering themselves from the DEI messaging. Same thing with uh, I think Harbor and Freight and a bunch of these big companies that Robbie Starbuck has been coming uh, calling out is because if they actually did care, then. They, they actually did care about the DEI and woke messaging. They would just leave it there. Who cares? But it's ash. Bottom line is about money. Mm -hmm. So if it doesn't make money, then they're going to remove it. But the thing is that Sweet Baby 
they don't care about this because they're getting consultant money from yeah, they get paid the ahead of time. They have no stake in it because they're not working off of a contract where, oh, we'll make X percentage of sales. No, they're mm -hmm. getting an upfront fee. So whatever they're charging, whether it's, you know, tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands, we have no idea. I can't imagine they're actually charging hundreds of thousands. There's no way anyone would hire them, even if it proved to be a bump up in ESG. I just, I don't know. I, I, I've been dying to get a hold of their pitch deck. I have tried to go undercover. I have tried to, you know, <laughs> see if somebody will squeal and ain't nobody falling for it. God. Yeah. It's, it's, it's just like, you know, you know, come on. If Matt Walsh was able to get into that yeah. convention at like the Democratic convention, <laughs> like I, I'm pretty sure you somebody would too. should squeal. <laughs> Just give me, the, I just want the pitch deck. I will even sign an NDA for my own curiosity. I am so desperate to see how they are convincing companies because we all know it's bullshit. The company doesn't mm -hmm. actually give a crap. They're just like, hey, this product already sucks. We might as well try to get what kind of a tax break we can through ESG or DEI or see if we can weasel out some more investors and squeeze some money out of them. Yeah. Who, who knows? But it's it's just a pain in, pain in the butt and... I, they're just wasting everyone's time. Like, okay, mm -hmm. congratulations. You ruined a few games. We'll just wait a few more years. We already have to wait for our favorites to come out. We have an incredible backlog. I can replay the same game for thousands of hours. Don't care. Just come on, knock it off. <laughs> yeah. And uh, right over there's another paragraph. He say, and, and as ridiculous, as stupid as all was, I actually was not prepared for the uh, escalation when noted buffoon and Twitter CEO Elon Musk decided that he would chime in with his very cool thoughts. Uh, so this was hard uh, hard the whole time. Since the beginning, it wasn't great. But we were receiving countless emails, all this constant hate. It was targeted enough to feel disconcerting, even when it was kind of silly. And it was also kind of drowning out the support. But when Elon Musk chimed in, it really made me realize the scale of it because the richest man in the world was suddenly... Uh, turning the eye of Sauron onto 16 people trying to make a pretty modest living in the industry they love. And he was arguing with our collapse. So and that's such a bullshit <laughs> statement. You don't love it. There's nothing about this that you love. Yeah. You love your gender studies and you love the power that you feel like you have. If you loved this industry, you wouldn't settle for bad products. You wouldn't do a bad job in Spider-Man, for example. The one thing that you're supposed to do, you got wrong. You wouldn't work with the lowest of the low. You would, you, in fact, if you loved this industry and you gave a crap about video games, you wouldn't try to weasel your way into Square Enix or Sony or any of that. You mm -hmm. would actually be teaching people in places like Chicago, Detroit, or other cities how to start a business, how to make their own games and tell their own unique story. If you loved this industry, you wouldn't be charging an arm and a leg for your crappy service. Thanks for checking out this segment of the Project Egg Row podcast. If you like what we do here, please like, share, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and you will know next time when we go live. We do go live every Saturday at 8 p.m. Once again, we are just getting started. Tons of more video to come. Thanks, and we'll see you guys next time.